Campbell's uh, Church on this uh, the Sunday, the 25th of April. And our service today has the title, Praying for Growth. Um, the family of Captain Tom, as you well know, have set a challenge for the weekend of Sunday, the 22nd of May. Um, it's centred round 100, so if you're feeling fit, you can run 100, 100 miles, or you can walk 100 paces, or you can, um, I don't know, do 100 swimmings, or I don't know, anything. But we're setting ourselves at St Michael's a collective challenge of 100 garden invitations between uh, Sunday the 2nd of May and Sunday the 9th of May for that, that week. And we've all suffered, I hope it doesn't start to rain in that week, because um, we've all enjoyed such lovely weather, and some of you were, anyway were, may well have had friends and neighbours already into your gardens. But that's a, a sample, really, of normal life. But what we want to do is to not uh, to have people to have people into gardens, but of course we're limited to six, um, and um, that the suggestion is that you just have six um, people, perhaps people that you don't know, friends or neighbours, not necessarily your closest, nearest, and dearest. Um, and this is to try to get the people who are still very, very nervous about coming out uh, to, to just reintegrate with society. There's an awful lot of need and an awful lot of fear and worry around. And um, the suggestion is uh, that if you don't have a garden, uh, perhaps you can team up with somebody who does. And the idea is that you don't, people bring their own drink, uh, own, own glass or cup. Uh, no, I think they're only serving cold drinks, so their own, own glass, and uh, you just supply the, the drinks, cold drink. Um, I've got some letters that for you to take home with that in, in mind. Uh, our first hymn then is Here I Am, Lord. The light of the peace of Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, 
died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to ask Ruth to come and uh, read to us from the Bible, from the Gospel of Matthew. The Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. The parable of the mustard seed. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch on its branches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Dear God, Head Gardener, help us to see the kingdom of heaven that is around us, and help us to understand how this small but mighty parable about the mustard seed applies to St Michael's here, now, today. Amen. Well, it's official. We are a growing church. Let's just take a moment to recognise what's happening here. Why is it happening here? And what our part is in helping the Kingdom of Heaven thrive here. So what's happening? Lots of things. Here's three that I can think of. We've raised more than we hoped for in the space of a few short weeks to renovate and repair the church hall. And we have doubled our congregation in the last couple of years. And right now, the other visible sign of abundancy, I think it's just outside these doors. What a beautiful garden we have, with new trees planted and flowers everywhere. And the daffodils were amazing, and now it's time for the cherries. It's drawing strangers <coughs> into the church grounds. In fact, when I arrived this morning, there were two young lads sitting next to the violas with their backpacks, and they waved to me as I came in. I think the church grounds are bearing witness to the love and commitment and the cherishing spirit that we have for our church and our fellowship. Okay, why is it happening? Well, Neil isn't here. But I do feel that we have a very committed and dynamic vicar in our midst right now. He seems to be pulling out the best in us. He's challenging us. And occasionally we might think he's in danger of wearing us out completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this vicar knows how to delegate, how to fundraise, how to evangelise, how to revitalise. Now what is our part in this? Well, let's remember who it is that's truly in charge of bringing growth to our church. Who is in charge of Neil and all of us? Who is in charge of the kingdom of heaven? God is. So let's keep our gaze fixed on God, the big boss. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here and it's working with us and through us. Our part is to seek out and pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit to keep this going. And that's what we're talking about today with the four Ps, the prayer part. Jesus describes how the kingdom of heaven might look to us when it's growing in this tiny but mighty parable of the mustard seed. And the gospels do not record what kind of mustard seed or how to interpret the parable. So I can tell you when I started to dig up the dirt, I found a great deal of different takes on it. 
And being Lucy, I had to examine every single mustard seed to figure out which mustard seed Jesus was talking about. And I am convinced that he is talking about one called the Salvadora Persica, which is what you see up there. Now here is how we can apply this parable to us to help inspire us at this time of growth. We can see this little patch of London sands as our church's allotment, perhaps in God's kingdom of heaven. We as a church have chosen to pay some serious attention to the mustard seed that God has given us to plant. And we hope therefore that it will grow and thrive. As a church, we can fertilize it, we can tend to it, but ultimately we know God is the one who causes the seed to grow. And as gardeners, we need to look to God to ask for his gaze to continue to shine down upon us and for his living water to continue to nourish us and for the Holy Spirit to keep guiding us in the nurturing of this seed that is now growing. Neil, the PCC and the congregation combined, we can't do this on our own. God wants to bless us. Now, it would have definitely been well known, this particular seed, the Salvador of Persica, to the disciples and others in the region during Jesus' time. Let me tell you about this amazing seed that we have growing here. It is indeed tiny when it starts out. A wee bit like the church congregation was a few years ago. Nevertheless, this seed has always contained God's word. It usually needs some close expert attention for the first three years, but then not so much. It grows steadily, even in dry, windy, salty, sandy conditions, perfectly suited for blundell sands. It lives for a long time, and it spreads through its own root system. God's word is firmly planted here. God's word can take root and spread here, in and from this allotment. Let me tell you about the branches and leaves. The leaves are evergreen, and the branches grow out in a great span, and they are plentiful. It provides shade and protection from a wild and windy weather system. And as it grows, birds catch sight of it and they start to flock to the tree for shelter and to rest within the shade of its leaves. With God's will, his seed here will grow into a great church, just like this. And people will flock to the church, our tree of life, to find God's peace. We hope for that, don't we? For us and for those still to find us in our church community. The berries. The fruit from this tree has a beautiful aroma and the berries taste sweet and peppery. The birds love them because they taste good. The flesh of these berries also has healing properties. Apparently, this fruit can be used effectively to heal a wound made by a snake bite. So the fruit of this tree will nourish and heal the birds resting on its branches. The bigger the tree grows, the more birds will find sustenance. Just as Jesus came to be as flesh amongst us and sustained us in the accepting of his word. Birds will also take these seeds and they will take the kingdom to other allotments near and far. This is God's tree of life and it will nourish and heal us as well as new visitors who will want to join our community. The wood from this tree, it's been used for fuel and for toothbrushes. It's actually called the toothbrush tree. 
The World Health Organization says the toothbrush made from the toothbrush tree is actually better than our toothbrushes. It kills plaque. Jesus is telling us in this parable that every part of the tree can be used for good, to keep us warm when the world is cold and hostile, and it can prevent decay. We hope for our church to have more capacity to be like this. This tree might grow to about 20 foot with wide reaching branches and it doesn't look very majestic or the kind of thing you would want growing along your avenue or your stately home. Instead, it's the kind of tree that will shelter and sustain the community around it as well as attract the wildlife. What an amazing vision this tree can give us of the kingdom of heaven. What kind of growth that we should hope for and plan for here at St. Mike's. Wow, very interesting, Lindsay. Um, we're going to listen to a second song now, Here I'm Back.
Let us pray. Guide us, teach us, and strengthen us, Lord. Help us to grow more and more like you desire us to be. Pure, gentle, truthful, courteous, generous, dutiful, vigilant, useful, valiant in all our doings, for your honour and glory. Amen. How beautiful the feet of those who bring good news. With that in mind, please put wings on our shoes. Show us the way to help bring in from the cold those who are seeking the gate to your fold. And so we pray for the growth of St. Michael's Church and the sons together. God, our mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our money, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lucy, part two. <laughs> okay, it's time to think about prayer. Let us ask God to help us and guide us in the nurturing of the seed that's growing here. We hope for our mustard seed to grow into a tree that is vibrant and strong, with wide-reaching branches, for it to sustain and support our community, to attract birds, to flock to its branches for shelter and nourishment. And the sound of many birds singing among its branches will add to the vibrance. How do we do this? We need to pray, not just during intercessions once a week, but petition God regularly, daily. Charles Spurgeon, he's a famous theologian, he was, and he said this, Do what you do thoroughly. Pray over it, heartily, and then leave the result to God. In other words, Whatever we do as Christians, no matter how small, it can be turned into something great by God. So whatever we are doing here has to include some seriously hearty praying. The Apostle Paul said, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Both these wise men of God are telling us, it's not up to us to worry about how this seed will grow. All we have to do is pray and let the Holy Spirit guide us and do what the Holy Spirit tells us. So we're going to pray some more. We're going to do some silent prayer. We're going to spend one minute four different aspects of prayer. First minute, we're going to take the word growth, we're going to put it on a feather, and we're going to let that feather drift down and land on a cloud, and we're going to contemplate that word growth. Starting now.
Now that we are focused on that beautiful word growth in God's garden, let us spend a minute asking God to show us how we can build and develop our relationship with him. Let us spend the next minute praying for our family and friends, the people that we know that have not yet found God, and ask God to shine his light on their path. Now, let us spend one minute on our church, praying for our church. Ask God to show us how we can help bring newcomers flocking into our circle of worship. Spring is here, everyone. Things are growing. Let this church be a keen gardener for God, and let us tend and nurture this mustard seed that he has given to us. Thank you, Lucy. Um, I'd just like to say a little bit about that uh, first thing, the idea of just stilling at the beginning of the prayer time. Just one moment, one minute of silence and contemplation before you start on your positions really makes it much more effective. Thank you. Uh, the hymn is Jerusalem. Wow, I don't you wish you could sing. Would you stand for the blessing? The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.